the world still identifies Somalia with conflict and grave famine. But a lot has changed since then. The chaos and conflict that once engulfed Mogadishu's port have subsided, and a few foreign investors are beginning to enter Somalia. Turkey is leading the way, but why do these two countries have such a strong bond? Somalia and Turkey became close friends in 2011 after Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan visited the country, the first non-African leader to do so in more than 20 years. The diplomatic and societal interactions between the two countries have witnessed remarkable growth. Initially, Somalia and Turkey share a long history that goes back to the Ottoman era, with the Turks playing a huge role in Somalia's independent struggle against the British colonial empire. But, Erdogan's historic God-sent visit amid the devastation of one of the worst famines in the country's history earned him high praise throughout Somalia. Furthermore, they are going ahead to sign a military pact to help Somalia with security against the notorious terrorist group Al-Shabaab. More than any other country, Turkey played a deeply influential role in bringing Somalia's situation to international attention. Turks have helped transform the man-made earthquake of Mogadishu into a semi-functioning city. Turkey has been assiduous in its efforts to open schools, improve public sanitation, repair roads, and renovate the country's dilapidated airport. Turkish Airlines is the first international airline to fly to Mogadishu four times per week in more than 20 years. Where once rival militias fought for control of these docks, now massive container ships queue to discharge their cargoes of cement, vehicles, pasta, and rice. Swooping cranes swoop up and down. Some are run by Turks, while others are run by Somalis. It is not only the port. Mogadishu is teeming with Turks. Their flag is as well. If you go, you will most likely see more Turkish flags than Somali flags. Even the garbage trucks trying to get rid of the 20 years' worth of rubbish and rubble come from Turkey. Somalis still talk about how the love affair began. How Erdogan picked up dirty, starving children how his wife kissed members of the despised minority clans. Now it's no surprise when you hear Somalis naming their boys Erdogan and their daughters Istanbul. This kind of affection for a foreign country is extremely rare in Somalia. Somalis dislike outsiders and have various derogatory nicknames for them. Other foreign films have lost their dominance in Turkey as a result of the Turkish film industry. Somalis used to love watching Bollywood movies, but Turkish films have now surpassed them. The number of young people, particularly women and girls, who want to learn Turkish has more than doubled. Before Turkey, Somalis often went to Egypt, Malaysia, and Syria. If you go to Turkey and find an opportunity to visit Istanbul or Ankara, it is impossible not to see a Somali pedestrian on the streets, a teenager, or a mother pushing a baby stroller. You will see that the Somali diaspora has been smoothly integrated into society, doing business, attending universities to study, and all of that is because we have Turkish airlines flying over Mogadishu every day carrying Somali passengers. Despite being a Muslim country with a rich Islamic history and monumental Islamic sites, Turkey also offers opportunities that Somalis are ready to grab in a way that does not contradict the host community's interests. With the revival of relations between the two countries, Somali traders embarked on Turkey to import Turkish products. Hundreds of Somalis in Istanbul have found work as a result of the influx of Somali merchants. Somalis have opened over a hundred small trading offices. Restaurants and beauty salons in Ankara and Istanbul are important indicators of Turkey's growing Somali population. Turkey has rather chosen an eccentric way of life in Somalia, which is classed by many as one of the world's most dangerous countries. Turkey's entry appears to be a blessing in disguise. Finally, there is a truly committed partner capable of catalyzing both peace and development. Africa provides Turkey with allies in international forums. It also represents a source of natural resources as well as a new market for more diverse trade and less reliance on Europe. However, some Somalis are becoming resentful about Turkey's penetration. Erdogan's trip appeared to be a heartfelt humanitarian mission, but it was actually part of a long-term, strategic effort. 
If Turkey had arrived in Somalia prior to 2011, it would have been regarded as a foreign occupying force. In the midst of one of the country's worst famines, Turkey's self-proclaimed humanitarian mission was viewed differently. Erdogan's historic visit to Somalia was meticulously planned and perfectly timed. After a decade, Somalis are realizing that Turkey has shifted from friend to foe, trade partner to trade protectist, and state builder to outright spoiler. They believe Turkey, like any other country, is an opportunist with a geoeconomic and geopolitical agenda. Instead of facilitating Somalia's development, Turkey has exploited its assets through state-sponsored corporations, all as part of a development trap disguised as religion. After 2011, Turkey's humanitarian mission gradually shifted from soft power to assertive power. Ankara has given lucrative no-bid contracts to Mogadishu's private companies, Albayrak Group and Favori LLC, to run the port and airport. Despite the fact that Somalia has a port revenue-sharing agreement with Albayrak, which receives 45% of the revenue, this has resulted in a one-sided expansion of trade, with Turkish traders importing nearly 50 times as much to Somalia as Somali traders exported to Turkey in 2020. Favori LLC has increased its expenses to maximize profits since taking over management of the airport. This reduced the government's revenue share from 45% to 6%. Both the Favori and Albayrak contracts were awarded in an opaque process that was not approved by the Somali parliament. A deal that has not been approved by parliament is null and void. This exposes the Somali government to liability in both cases. The Turks have also constructed what is officially known as the world's largest embassy. It is nearly twice the size of the United States military base in Djibouti. However, Turkey did not pay for the land, and there is no evidence that the military agreement included any provision for lease payment to the Somali people. Turkey has signed a number of military treaties with Somalia's federal government over the years in order to capitalize on Somalia's geostrategic position in the Indian Ocean. Sadat, a Turkish private military contractor, has confirmed its involvement in Somali troop training. Turkey has also developed a market for its weapon manufacturers, such as Mkex MPT-76 and other HKG-3 variants. Turkey is using its military base in Somalia to increase its influence and gain a foothold in the Horn of Africa, all without paying a penny in rent, and it has become clear that the government's goal is not to protect Somalia from the scourge of Al-Shabaab or to provide meaningful security assistance. Some Somalis are dissatisfied with the Turkish model. They have only gained expensive bad experience as a result of imported autocracy, democratic backsliding, and a development trap. Rather than reforming and strengthening Somalia's weak government institutions to reduce corruption, the Turkish government chose to incubate its private sector companies and build a portfolio and track record that it can pitch to other African or low-income countries with the deceptive marketing that, if it works in Somalia, it can work in your country too. An African country that is unable to access stringent World Bank loans or Chinese soft loans may be tempted to accept such an offer, risking falling into a development trap. The honeymoon period is now over for this couple. It remains to be seen whether this relationship will stand the test of time. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories.